Australia had just experienced the start of one of the best snow seasons in decades and we were keen to get there while the powder was fresh. Our family road trip to the snowfields began in Sydney, Australia's largest city. Well, Australia is a great place for a self-drive holiday. Just rent a car and take the family exploring. Now the roads are clearly marked and you can easily find your way around. And even if you do get lost, that's half the fun. Now, we managed to find the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Let's see if we can get out of town. We embarked on the drive with some help from Hertz. You can book well ahead of your trip to Australia and ensure the rate in advance, as well as a location for your rental car pickup. Now, we were willing to take a few wrong turns, but you can request a GPS in-car satellite navigation system, and that might help avoid a few front and back seat arguments. If there's only so much self-drive your family can handle, and you only want to travel one way, you can do so. Canberra and then briefly to the town of Cooma as we drew close to the Snowy Mountains. Cooma is the capital of the Snowy Mountains. It was settled in the early 1800s but the real growth came with the construction of the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme. The scheme, regarded as one of the engineering wonders of the world, includes 16 major dams and seven power stations. It took 25 years to build and was completed in 1974. More than 100,000 people from over 30 countries came to work in the mountains to make true a vision of diverting river water to thirsty farms and to power industry. 63 kilometres west of Cooma is the resort town of Jindabyne. Well, many people who head to the snowy mountains for ski season stay here at the town of Jindabyne. We're only 30 minutes from the slopes of Threadbow and Perisher Blue. And during the warm months, everyone heads back here again, drawn to the beauty of Lake Jindabyne for a whole host of water sports. There are numerous statues here dedicated to the Snowy Hydro Scheme, which actually flooded Jindabyne's first settlement when the Snowy River was dammed. The population was relocated here to a new town. Jindabyne is the gateway to the snowfields of Threadbow and Perisher Blue, and it's here that you'll get your vehicle's access pass from the Kosciuszko National Park. This is a town filled with resorts, ski lodges, ski hire venues, and cool restaurants and budget cafes. You can collect your passes from the visitor centre that's run by the National Park and is brimming with useful information, as well as displays that recount the history of the local Aborigines and the hardy first foreign settlers who made the high country their home. All around us here is the Kosciuszko National Park. It's home to Australia's highest mountain, the country's best snow fields and a rich local history. This is Australia's highest national park, covering 1.5 million acres of alpine terrain. Australia's tallest peak, Mount Kosciuszko, stands at 2,228 metres above sea level, and it was a Polish explorer who gave it its European name. Companies like Hertz have actually developed an overseas driving guide that provides tips on planning and things to look out for on roads like this. In our case, a four-wheel drive option meant we could fit the whole gang and our snow gear into one vehicle and we didn't need to struggle with chains on the icy roads. This is not just a snow sport destination. Here at the top of Australia, you'll find a whole selection of alpine bushwalks that can be undertaken by the whole family. This UNESCO Biosphere Reserve is home to some truly unique wildlife, including 200 species of birds. It's a great place to fish, bicycle, hike, camp and explore for all the family. But on this holiday, the snow was waiting. Mm -hmm. 